the Tribune News Network. This is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Royal Bahamas Police Force Fire Services are continuing to investigate a structural fire at Potter's Key Dock that has left six stalls completely burned to the ground and two others with damage. Two boats were also destroyed. Speaking to reporters yesterday, Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources Michael Pintard said officials were awaiting a report from fire services about the cause of the blaze. Mr. Pintard expressed his sympathy for the owners and workers of the properties destroyed in that blaze. Asked about government's plans for rebuilding, Mr. Pintard said he was set to have a series of meetings with vendors as well as his colleagues, noting that he was not in control of the public purse. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said the definition of young professionals who will be eligible to buy lots in a proposed upscale community in western New Providence is broad enough to include barbers, plumbers, farmers, and many others, not just lawyers and doctors. He was speaking during a debate in the House of Assembly yesterday on a resolution to develop the community, which involves 83 acres of land on the northern side of John F. Kennedy Drive, the junction of Prospect Ridge. Dr. Minnis further noted that surveys of the land show that some areas are low-lying. He noted that those selected will pay no stamp tax and no real property tax for two years, in addition to other concessions. Public Works Minister Desmond Bannister has defended a sting operation at the farm shantytown in Abaco last week, insisting residents had broken the law. He said they were able to do so with the help of complicit Bahamians who will face prosecution if identified. Mr. Bannister said there are Bahamians who benefited financially by unlawfully providing services to unregulated communities by facilitating breaches of the law. An example of this, he said, was the nightly provision of heavy equipment to construct roads, thereby enabling the construction of even more unregulated structures in in addition to unregulated shops and the sale of stolen goods, the minister told Parliament. In the House of Assembly yesterday, the Deputy Prime Minister said officials had been faced with constant challenges emanating from the actions of residents living in the farm shanty town. House Speaker Halston Moutry said the constituency's commission estimated that each constituency in New Providence should have about 5,100 registrants for the next general election to ensure voter parity. His comment during a House of Assembly sitting yesterday came while he requested that the Parliamentary Registration Department provide his commission with the latest voter registration data so it could complete its assessment and submit its report. Speaker Moutry revealed when the House resumed after the lunch break that he had been provided with the necessary data. Before yesterday, the last time his commission received data was February 22nd, he told the House. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, the U.S. today recommended a pause in using the single-dose Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine to investigate reports of rare but potentially dangerous blood clots, setting off a chain reaction worldwide and dealing a setback to the global vaccine campaign. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Food and Drug Administration announced that they were investigating unusual clots that occurred 6 to 13 days after vaccination. The acting FDA commissioner said she expected the pause to last a matter of days. France suspended all flights from Brazil on Tuesday amid mounting fears over the particularly contagious coronavirus variant that has been sweeping the South American country. Prime Minister Jean Castex announced the suspension to Parliament. Castex said, quote, We note the situation is getting worse, and so we have decided to suspend all flights between Brazil and France until further notice. Although France has seen comparatively few known cases of the P1 variant striking Brazil, the ravages it is causing in Latin America's largest nation are increasingly raising alarm bells in France. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A weak cold front across the central Bahamas will continue to push through the southeastern islands, then slowly dissipate while high pressure builds across the area in the wake of the front. Beachgoers should remain alert due to the risk of rip currents along north and east coast beaches. There is a risk of water spot activity in the vicinity of the frontal boundary. For the northwest Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny and warm with the chance of a passing isolated shower becoming fair and mild tonight. Winds north to northeast at 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. For the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy and warm, with a few isolated showers mainly in the vicinity of the front through tonight. Winds north to northeast at 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 82 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 66. The sun will set this afternoon at 7.30 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.49. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets. Or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.